thing, Joe. I gotta dress up in this monkey suit every day and go somewhere I don't even like being. And, and the worst part is that uh, I gotta pretend to be someone I'm not for eight hours a day. And by the time I'm done, you don't even know who you are anymore. Yeah. You know, George, I might just be a lowly barkeep, but I always say I gotta be me. Otherwise, who else is gonna do it? Another one bites the dust. Joe, well, I've been coming to this bar for 10 years now, and it never ceases to amaze me that you always seem to say the right thing to just the right person. What's your secret? I'm really just talking to myself. There's somebody I'd like to talk to. Give me something strong. OK. What is it? Bottle rage. Sounds perfect. <coughs> what are you trying to do, kill me? No, but from the looks of things, I might be doing you a favor if I was. Spare me the psychology. <sighs> Men! Something tells me this is a relationship issue. Why I'm not that guy. Oh, you're all the same. You say what you need to get what you want. You're right. Dalai Lama, St. Francis of Assisi, Gandhi, all terrible, terrible liars. Those aren't men. Those are saints. And who even knows about Gandhi? He probably lied to his wife, too. Oh, I'm sure it was like, Mahatma, what do you want for dinner? Oh, it's all right. I had something out. What? Mm, you know, curry, madras, lentil, dal. You name it. Mahatma, you've been fasting again, haven't you? No, no. I'm telling you, my belly is full. I couldn't eat another thing. You know what the doctor said about fasting too much? It was just a juice cleanse. I knew it. You lying, morally reprehensible creature with a penis. Yeah, I'm sure that's exactly how it was. So, what's your problem? I can't trust him. But you keep doing it anyway. What else can I do? I mean, he says, give me another chance. So I give it, and then he lies again. And then he lies about the lies. You know, it would be so refreshing if you guys would just tell the truth. Well, I'll give you some truth. Thank you. You're welcome. Now, first of all, you're a fucking idiot. What? See, I know you couldn't handle the truth. I can handle it. No, I don't think you can. I think you want me to sign off on this victim act and find it charming and tell you you've been wrong. And then you want me to indict half a species based on the actions of a couple of unevolved members of said species. OK, a whole lot of unevolved and unaccountable members, but that doesn't get you off the hook. You want your guy to tame the truthless tongue? Stop indulging him. If you're going to play enabler, you're just as guilty as he is. Actually, you're worse, because you're lying to yourself. So who's got the problem? Wow. Game, set, and match. And I thought this drink was strong. You want another? You trying to get me drunk? No. I'm trying to sober you up. I don't know what to say. Just be honest with yourself. You don't have to count on anybody else to do it. I have to go. See? I knew you could handle the truth. No, it's, it's not that. I have something that I need to do. Drinks on the house. Not for the drink. It's for what you said. I don't charge for my advice. Well, you should, because it was amazing. Boy, for a guy who's just talking to himself, sure to make a lot of sense for the rest of us. Jason, your father's here. Good to see you too, Sam. I have to talk to you. Is it court ordered? Funny. This isn't a joke, Joe. What's wrong? Nothing. 
In fact, it's good news. Hi, you're getting the sex change. I should have known I can't have a serious conversation with you. And why'd you start one? Jason's gifted. I could have told you that. Yeah, well, now it's official. He scored unusually high on his test scores, and those teachers feel that he'd be better off somewhere else. Where? College? He's in third grade. No, just a better, more specialized school for gifted kids. Well, schools aren't cheap. I'm well aware. Public well, school's fine. I went there and I turned out okay. You're a bartender, Joe. I like my job. You know, it's not my job to tell you what to do anymore, but it is my job to take care of our son. Can't one of us just move to a better school district? I am not having this idiotic conversation with you. We need to get the money for this school. 13000 a semester? That's like college tuition. Don't they have any scholarships? They're all taken for the upcoming year. You know, I won't have my son missing out on an opportunity for an excellent life because his father is either too weak, dumb, or lazy to provide for his needs. Hey, Dad. How's it going? Good. Real good. <laughs> Doesn't look like it. Tip off the old block. That's because sometimes when things look bad, it's just because we fail to recognize the goodness there is. Oh, so you mean because it looks bad, it means it's actually good? Yeah. Come on, we're going for burgers. I'll take care of <clears throat> You know we only take cash or credit, right? These are for you. Did I win Miss America again? <laughs> yes. But these are for your kick-ass advice. Well, thank you, and you're welcome. Well, actually, that's not why I came by. I saw this, and I thought of you. It's perfect. You are brilliant. You will be a hit in no time. Thanks for thinking of me, but I'm happy doing what I'm doing here, and I don't talk to people so I can get famous. Oh, <laughs> I get it. You're one of those guys. You know, the ones that preach from on high, but then when push comes to shove, they make excuses for not doing the right thing. And what would be the right thing? To share your gift with the world. Look, I know you don't believe that you helped me and that he's just gonna let me down again. But the way that you were with me led to transformation. And that's a rare ability. There's no guarantee they'll even want me. It says right there, wanted. I appreciate it, but it's just not me. Just think about it. See you next week, champ. Any progress? I'm trying. You need to stop trying and just do it. Okay, Yoda. Will do. Okay, I'm gonna hit record, your intro, and then I'll come in. Welcome to the Joe Show. You're on the air. I have Rachel from the living room. Hi, Joe. Hi, Rachel. What can I do for you? Well, I'm having some trouble at work. Now, are you having trouble with work, or is work having trouble with you. Maybe you can help me figure it out. Maybe. Okay. I think you're trying too hard. You just started. I know, but it, it sounds like you're forcing it. Well, I am. It's a contrived situation. You're making shit up, so I'm self-conscious about sounding like an asshole. So I have this friend who is feeling self-conscious about sounding like an asshole. What's your friend's name? His name is Joe. Just your regular Joe, huh? No. He's extraordinary. He's wise, gentle, and kind. So what's Joe's problem? He doesn't want to sound like an asshole. I would say he's scared. Because he works very hard to be authentic. And he doesn't want artifice to intrude on that. Next thing you know, all that hard-fought wisdom he's accrued by rigorous self-examination and ruthless accountability gets displaced with a self-conscious tick as he strives to satisfy a fickle public opinion. In English? He doesn't want to become a fake by being a people pleaser. Well, let's say Joe remains steadfast as ever, but with just a little more notoriety. I mean, you've managed to do it with your own radio show. Well, that's because I'm hyper vigilant about my own BS. So I know how to keep it all in perspective in the face of all the fame, fortune, and hero worship that ultimately comes with the territory. 
because I'm just focused on being a conduit of truth. So you don't take credit for the wisdom that you procure? No, I'm not stupid. I'm just saying I keep my ego in check because before I was a famous person that everybody pays attention to and celebrates in sometimes idiotic ways, I was just a lowly bartender in some obscure neighborhood corner bar dispensing my folksy version of life as I see it. And I am well aware that at any point I could wind up back there once again, sentenced to relative irrelevancy. So that's your secret. Not much of a secret if everybody knows it, right? Bravo, Joe. Let's send it. Wait a second. I'm just getting warmed up here. Ask me a few more questions. Here comes your girlfriend. Not my girlfriend. Yet. Joe. Joe. We just got an email from the station. Well, what'd they say? Well, I didn't open it yet. I wanted you to be there. Well, open it. Dear applicants, we greatly appreciate your submission. However, at this Time. We are unable to offer you the position of janitor, so feel better about not having to scrub our toilets anytime soon. See? It all worked out. I'm sorry. I'm not. Maybe my homespun wisdom just plays better against the stench of beer nuts and alcohol. That, or they're just the biggest group of morons that I've ever heard of. That could be it. I think I'm more of a one on one guy anyway, you know? Plus, a lot of what I do is very nonverbal. It's all in the face. Like when I say, you're acting really stupid. <laughs> or, uh, really? <laughs> See? I don't have a face for radio. That's for sure. You know, um, this might just be me rationalizing here, but maybe it's just not meant to be. You're right. You're rationalizing. You're right. It sucks. <sighs> Well, well, he's got Barney's. You go, girl. See, that's who needs their own show. That's who they want. See, they want women and minorities. They don't want white guys like me telling them what to do. If I was a black woman, I'd be perfect. You love Loquisha. Hey, Loquisha. My name's Ted. Ted Rambo's dead. You sound dead inside. I am Loquisha. You got no spunk, no spark, no sizzle. Yes, yes, and double yes. When was the last time you felt alive, Ted? I can't remember, Loquisha. Well, you better, otherwise on your gravestone to go and read, kill eyes, Ted. Who cares? Next column. You know, Loquisha, I think you're a sensation. And I think you're a Sagittarius. Well, I started out as a Sagittarius, but I ended up as a Libra. Hey, Krisha, my name's Tati. I think my boyfriend's cheating on me. Well, there's a good reason for that, girl. What? Oh, don't act shocked with me. No, Krisha, don't play that. This ain't no pretend time. This ain't no Narnia. But I am the lion. You are the witch. And it's time for you to come out of the wardrobe. This could actually work. to see you're working so hard, Joe. I got a smartphone. But you said you hated smartphones. I was wrong. I got about 100,000 Facebook friends now, and they really like me. And they're all gonna take me to the airport. I mean, these are really, really good friends. Okay, well, why don't you tell them you have to work now? Okay, just let me check my email, because Santa Claus might be contacting me to say we won the Mega Millions. Oh, so that's how he's gonna get the money to pay for all the toys this year. No, he's going to have the elves make it, like usual. But then he's going to take the Mega Million money and invest it into real estate. 
Okay, well then afterwards, why don't you ask Santa for a job? Making toys, because it looks like this one's not gonna work out. Okay, okay. This ought to be interesting. Dear applicant, we are pleased to say we really enjoyed your submission. We'd very much like to invite you to the station so we can discuss the possibilities. I knew it! I want Loquisha! Hey, Joe, how about another? Mm. Yeah, sure, Dickie. So what's new, Joe? You wouldn't believe me if I told you. Try me, I'm pretty well, so I'll believe you anything at this point. Well, you know how I tend to give advice around here? Oh, yeah. Well, I submitted myself to a radio station for my own show. Well, congratulations. They rejected me. Oh, well, what congratulations then? But I just resubmitted, and now they want to meet me. Well, that's great. But they think I'm somebody else. Aren't we all to some degree? No, they think I'm a woman. Hey, I can vouch for your manliness if there's any problem. Can you, can you hit me again? I should probably just forget about it. I mean, I just did it in the beginning as an experiment, but you know, they actually want to meet me. Well, who wouldn't want to meet you, Joe? What am I going to do, wear a dress? I think you'd look beautiful in a dress. Thanks, but what about a black woman? How am I going to pull that off? Who am I to judge? I like a little bit of brown sugar myself, to be quite honest. Don't tell my wife. I mean, there's just no way. There would be no way to do this. There's always a way. If you like the chick, you two find a way to get together. That's what it all is. Even if I could pull it off, it's just not who I am. I'd be being dishonest. I heard that. It'd be big, though. What, your love? No, the money. Oh, so she's a rich bitch, huh? Sounds like she's not black. She's green and gold, my favorite colors. If you got an opportunity with this chocolate heiress, you take it. Screw what society says. Marrying for love is overrated. I mean, I didn't. Look what happened to me. You've been happily married for 25 years. Yeah, but she's not a rich black girl. I think you've had enough. Of love? Bring on the money, baby. <laughs> Dad, we're losing 20 grand a month. Advertisers just aren't stepping up like they used to. We're losing audience, that's the real issue. People aren't tuning in like they once were. It's because we have nothing unique anymore. If you want music, you got Pandora, you got Spotify, Sirius XM, you can get music anywhere. It's not the same world as it once was where a couple of local radio stations are vying for eardrums. What about traffic and weather? Pandora's not giving them that. They got apps for that, Dad, it's a new day. What we need is something those other guys don't have. How about a million dollar giveaway? You can get that by playing the lotto. What we need is a star. We've got jocks. We got jokes. The Dana Don shows in last place in drive time. Yeah, but they're like Stern. People like that. The ripoffs. And their idiotic frat boy humor gets old fast. Stern's gotten old. What we need is something new, fresh, exciting. OK, OK, I heard enough criticism. We need a solution. Then listen to this. You live with Loquisha. Hey, Loquisha. My name's Ted. Ted, I'm not dead. You sound dead inside. <laughs> I am Loquisha. Well, it's my job. I just hate it. What I would do is I would set the building on fire if I was you. You think I could get away with that? <laughs> Not at all, but you'd be done with that job. <laughs> <laughs> She's brilliant. I know. I love it. But we don't do talk radio. Then we'll start. I don't know. It's kind of out there. This is what's going to make us relevant again. She's going to get people tuning in. Whether you love her or hate her, she's going to get people talking. OK. Get her in here. You know, ever since you got that smartphone, all you do is check it. I got a lot of Facebook friends I need to keep up with. You don't even know those people. Just because you haven't met somebody doesn't mean they can't be your friend. You're right. I'll put it away. In fact, I should just return it. First, let me check my email. Yeah. What? I might be getting a really important email, like from the president. Why would the president email you? He might be wanting to give me a pardon. What's a pardon? It's when you do something really bad and the president forgives you for it. What'd you do that was so bad? I bought this stupid smartphone. Dad, that smartphone's making you stupid. 
Holy guacamole. What? I think I might have solved both our problems. Dear Ken, thank you for your email. I am very interested in your offer. However, due to personal reasons, I am unable to come to your station for a meeting. I have a rare form of xenophobia brought on by a childhood episode. Don't ask. I will, however, be available to speak by phone this week. Please let me know what time would work for you. Yours truly, Loquisha. This is Loquisha. Hi, Loquisha. This is Bob Richardson, president of WCRW. I'm here with my son, Ken, the GM. Hi, Loquisha. Hello, Robert. Hello, Kenneth. I'm sorry, could you get him and just hold on for one quick second? Sure. I can't do this. We cannot do this. I can do this. <clears throat> I'm so sorry, gentlemen. I just had to sneeze. So, what's up? Well, Lucretia, we really enjoyed your demo tape. Yeah, we just loved it. I didn't send you no demo tape. You didn't? No. I sent you an audio file. <laughs> you like stuck in the 90s, Robert Bob. What, you on a rotary phone right now or something? <laughs> I'm just busting your cojones. So, you want to offer Loquisha a job? Boy, you don't mess around. Life's too short to beat around the bush, Robert Bob. Okay, we'll give you a three-hour slot, weeknights, 11 to 2 a.m. Late night, huh? Live Loquisha late night on WCRW. I like the sign of that. So do we, and live with Loquisha. Perfect name for the show. You talking sense, Kenneth. But we need to talk dollars. How much y'all gonna pay Loquisha? Well, Loquisha, you have to understand that you're an unknown commodity, so... We can't afford to pay you too much. How much isn't too much? How about $500 a week? That's $100 a show, $33.33 an hour. Beats minimum wage. Yeah, but I ain't gonna be doing no minimum work. You know how much a good therapist costs just to work on one person? And I'm gonna be doing therapy by the thousands and maybe by the millions by the time I get done. We're not doubting your ability, Laquisha. The show's a hit, we can renegotiate. Oh, it'll be a hit, all right. Okay, we tried for one month, but I got some conditions. Okay, shoot. First of all, I need to do the show from my house. Why? Well, there's a xenophobia thing, and then I just feel more comfortable in my own space. I'm afraid that's impossible. Why? Well, unless you have a radio station in a studio at your house, it just couldn't work. Why can't I just set up a podcasting station? Look, Laquisha, this is non-negotiable. There's just too many technical issues. Not to mention, you need an on-set, qualified engineer to run the show. Okay, I think maybe I could come in, but I need to choose my own producer and engineer. I'm gonna bring them with me. And nobody, and I mean nobody, gets to be in the studio when I'm doing my show. And I don't want anybody to watch me coming and going either, okay? No quick going to be the biggest thing in radio, but I still need my anonymity. Those are some extreme conditions. No, they ain't. They just matters of privacy. I ain't trying to be no diva. But I need these boundaries in order to do a good show. I hope you can understand that. Sounds a little paranoid to me. Did you see the Jennifer Hudson trial where her brother-in-law killed her entire family? Well, I got some men out there, if they knew where I was, would want to do some nasty-ass shit to me, and maybe to you fellas, too. Really? Why? Why do people do crazy things? Why do men hate in Star Wars? Because they ain't right in their head, OK? I'm going to try to fix people so they get right, but I can't do that if I'm dead. So what do you say? We don't even get to meet you? We meeting on the phone right here, right now. Pleasure to meet you. My name's Loquisha. You got a deal, Laquisha. You start next Monday. What's the occasion? I figured out how to send my son to school. I just put mine on the bus. Well, this is a very expensive bus. So must be made of gold. That's what I'm hoping. <laughs> hmm. Do you know anybody who knows how to produce a show? What kind of show? It's for a... Never mind. Can you watch the bar for just a minute? 
I seriously doubt anybody's gonna steal it. Good thing. Yeah. Hey, Mason. Hey, how you doing, Joe? Good. Listen, you're a producer, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, I, I produced a few albums for some local musicians. What do you need? I need somebody to help me produce a radio show. Uh, I've never done that before. Why don't you just get a guy at the station? I'm sure they have somebody in house. Come in the back room. All right. Back room. I'm doing a radio call-in show, and I need somebody to screen the calls and work the board. OK, I can do that. What does it pay? That uh, couldn't be much, maybe 200 a week. It's like 40 a night. It's like, it's like 13, 50 an hour. It's more than you'll be making hanging out here. Yeah, still. I'll throw in free drinks. For life. OK, I'll do it. But you can't tell anybody about it. What, about the show? I, I would think you'd want people to know. I mean, that's the, that's the point, right? What I'm about to share with you can never, ever leave this room. Are we about to kill somebody? I'm serious. Yeah, yeah, so am I. <sighs> they don't know they're hiring. Wait, are we going to sneak in and do some guerrilla radio or something? Because if so, I may not be interested. No, we're not going to sneak in, OK? I mean, we kind of are. Do you think they're hiring a black woman? <laughs> and, and what might that be? I kind of led him to believe my name was Loquisha. Uh-huh. Loquisha. And they didn't notice you weren't a black woman when they met you? Wait, you're not some kind of transgender or transracial cross-cultural dresser, are you? We just spoke on the phone. Oh. Oh. <laughs> let me guess. You Loquisha. How you doing, baby? <laughs> Oh, man, you're crazy, crazy. You're right, I'm crazy, but I need the money for my kid's school. What if we get caught? We're not going to get caught. That's what every criminal thinks. This is not a crime. It's theater. Uh-huh. Can I get those free drinks now? Studio. Hi, this is Mason James. Who? Laquisha's producer. All right. Yeah, uh, we need someone to unlock the back door in the studio vacated so, so we can do the show. Ken told me this was going to be weird. Lucretia's just very... Weird? No, private. OK, so Larry's going to put on a five-minute track to rap in about 30 seconds. Then we're going to get out of here. Unlock the door, and it's all yours. Perfect. Good luck. Thanks. We're going to need it. You're already causing quite the stir. Good. Now let's do this. OK, I'm going to get in the control booth. When that red light goes on, you're on the air. OK. And you can take the bag off your head. Well, what if they have cameras in you? Well, better to find out now and get it over with, right? Yeah. You're right. OK, we got a minute to do this. Remember the plan. Just start talking. When the calls come in, I'll screen. Start sending them your way. OK. You nervous? You're right. You're going to be great. Remember, it's not a crime. It's theater. Welcome to the first episode. My name is Loquisha, and we're going to be talking. My mama, she called me Loquacious Loquisha. She said I have the gift of gab. Now, one thing you need to know is I ain't part of the system, so I don't have to tell you what everybody else tell you. Your spouse, your family, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your work, your government, your president, especially your president, they all lie to you. But I ain't never going to lie to you. I'm going to always tell you the truth. And if I don't, you can find me and you can shoot me, if you can find me. All right, I'm ready for my first caller. Go ahead. Hey, I'm Noel. Hello, Noel. What's your problem? I want to hear some Jeff Leppard. 
You want us to listen to some sort of animal with the hearing defect up in my program? I don't even know how I do that, no. Is this metal at midnight? Metal at midnight is canceled. You live loquisha. Loquisha? Next caller. All right, listen up, audience, and apparently my screener. Metal at midnight is dead. They left the building. But you live with Loquisha, and we take it on the spot. We the beating heart of Motown in the middle of the night when things ain't right with your boyfriend, your girlfriend, you got a work situation, or you just wonder, what's it all about, Loquisha? You call me up, and we gonna make it right together. Next caller. Hi, Loquisha, my name's Dan. No, it ain't. Excuse me? I can tell you lying right off the bat. How can you tell? Okay, stop. Loquisha don't play that. Okay, you don't call on my show with no fake-ass name. We keep it real up in here. Now, what's your real name? Fred. All right, Fred. What's your problem? Um, well... Oh, come on already. I ain't got no all day. What's your problem? You gonna give me a conniption, boy? Well, it's my girlfriend. All right, stop right there. She, like, dominating you. She out of control. Yeah. All right, here's what you do. Next time she do something you don't like, just say no. What do you mean? Just, like, no? That's right. Just say, uh-uh, all right? Have some boundaries, get a backbone, and then slap a bitch. I'm joking. You touch her, I will kill you. Next caller. Right. And I think you could do better than you doing already if you just allow yourself to do it. Open your heart. It's simple. You know what I mean? Hi, Loquisha. It's free. Oh, I ain't talking to you. Not the way you sound. Let's call it. You live. You on air. Hi, Loquisha. It's Michelle. Oh, you sound nice, girl. And the first thing you need to do is you need to look at yourself and say, hmm, do I smell? Because you just might. My boyfriend has a son slightly rash. OK, stop right there. Any man with a rash is not worth holding on to. Get rid of him. Next call. Lola Falana, I mean, and Barry White, with, mm, sometimes he give you an orgasm just singing. No, I know, because I had a few. Hello, you on the air? Hey, my name is Larry. Larry, yeah, you a computer programmer, ain't you? Yes, I program in C++. Larry, yeah, I'm going to tell you right away. You need to get laid, Larry. Excuse me? Ain't no excuse for it, Larry. You need to get yourself some coochie. <laughs> this ain't no laughing matter, Larry. How old is you? I'm 45 years old. You 45 and you ain't never touch a woman. Why? Well, I've touched her. But I mean, without cash being exchanged. You know, like, where you didn't have to pay for it. I um, no, then. All right. I'm going to help you out, Larry. I'm going to give you a number. These are some people, I know them through my sister-in-law. I don't know how it works, but all I can tell you is they ain't gonna charge you with some sort of charity. I think it's called Mercy Fuck. And you just go and get yourself some coochie, all right, Tim? No Quisha sent you. All right, I'm gonna put you through to my screener. That's the end of our first show. I just think we had a great success. Thank you so much for tuning in. We gonna be here Every weeknight from 11 to 2, I want all you insomniacs, night owls, graveyard workers to tune in, call up, and spread the word. Good night, everybody. Well done. Thank you. I don't know what I'm more impressed by, you as a black woman or your therapy techniques. I know, but she has to only thing he got to change is his address to get witness protection because you out your mind. You go, girl. You white people so afraid to say what's on your mind. What you so afraid of? You the one running things. And you like slaves to what other people think. After all these years, white people are the slaves. <laughs> How you like that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we've been married for 25 years. You've been married 25 years, you ain't never had sex. You know you ain't officially married, right? That's called the consuming of the marriage. I think you mean the consummation. Well, if you know what it's called, then get busy, girlfriend. Get <laughs> some. <laughs> Late night and you live, Loquisha. Go ahead. Hi, Loquisha. Been listening to your shows lately. You learning anything? Yeah, that you're a racist bitch. Excuse me? You heard me, always saying how white people do this and white men are like that. What the hell would you know about being a white guy anyway? <laughs>
I think I know quite a bit. Oh, do you? That's like saying I know what it's like to be a black woman. Until you've walked a mile in a white man's shoes. I suggest you shut the hell up. Well, I can assure you I have. In fact, I'm wearing some right now. Manola Blanick. He white, right? And let me tell you something. I possess a little thing called empathy, which allows me to connect to other people and help them with their problems. Oh, really? Yes, really. Not only that, but I possess the powers of observation, and it doesn't take a particular body part or skin color to see that you really don't like the idea of a black woman understanding you so much. Understand me? You don't understand me one bit. Oh, I understand you perfectly. You hear me on the radio and you think to yourself, how can a black woman be more successful and smarter than I am? Oh, come on, that's absurd. Oh, is it? I tell you something about yourself right now. What? You unemployed. How'd you know that? Because guys like you always got a chip on their shoulder. You up late because you can't sleep. You're trying to figure out how you're going to make ends meet. So you break out that old clock radio you had for about 30 years to try and soothe yourself. And you tune the dial to Loquisha and you start listening. I make a whole lot of sense to you. Some. But even though it's radio, all uh, you can see is color and gender. So you see a black woman was intelligent and caring. With her own show, and you think to yourself, uh-oh, rule of the dinosaurs is over. Nobody wants to listen to no white man no more, especially not an older white man like you. You in your 50s, right, Don? Early 50s. Mm -hmm. But see, the problem is, your perception is all off. Yeah, you're having here. You have misdirected anger because you have crafted a narrative whereby Loquisha is the villain for not letting you rule the world anymore. So you decide you're going to call out my show and ruin it for me so nobody gets to win. I don't get my show no more. All them people I was helping or will help, they don't get the benefit. And you are still unemployed and bitter because you ain't the king of everything. That's not fair. You're right. It ain't fair that you stand in your own way. How long you been unemployed, sir? Nine months. So you about to give birth to a whole new you. I don't know what you're talking about. Let me clarify. You like some teenage girl just got a shocking bit of news. In her case, she pregnant. In yours, you fired. I was laid off. Fired, laid off, whatever. It still ain't got no job. Nine months later, you still going through the grieving process Denial, anger, bargaining, depression. Yeah, so? So, time for you to come to acceptance. This is your come to loquitia moment. You about to give birth to a whole new, better version of yourself. You didn't need that job. Let go of it. You can't suit you anyway. How do you know? Did it? Not really. I was pretty miserable. I, I hated my boss. Sounds to me like you and misery is the common denominator here. It has nothing to do with loquitia or black women unless you a black woman. Do I sound like a black woman? What does a black woman sound like anyway? That's a preconceived notion. That's like looking at somebody's face and deciding how they're going to behave when the only face you need to be judging is your own. Because that is where you're going to find your answers. Now, how's that going to get me a job? You already got a job. And that's to look in the mirror and find out why you so mad at Loquisha. But well, hold up. I'm going to help you with that one, too, because I think it's that I have figured out how to do something that you have yet to. Like what? Something I love. Next caller. New local talk radio host is creating some buzz with her new show. Going only by the name of Loquisha, this brash, no-nonsense African-American woman has gotten a lot of listeners tuning back into FM radio. The station's owner, Bob Richardson of WCRW, says the Arbitron ratings have gone up 40% in the late-night time slot where Live with Loquisha currently occupies. Here's what some listeners are saying. Loquisha's a genius. She tuned into what my problem was in two minutes. She's like the new Freud of the airwaves. It's her direct, no-nonsense style that appeals to me. Plus, she's hilarious. She doesn't let anyone get away with anything. Here's a brief snippet from her Thursday night show. So I suggest you just strip down in your drawers, hidden in your office, and let everybody there know you letting it all hang out from now. From now on, you ain't got nothing to hide, girl. And make sure you shake your shimmy shab. But who is this Loquisha? Management at WCRW 
would only say as long as she's doing her job, their only concern is that she's a radio host. We were unable to get any details into her life, and they refused to grant us an interview. So for now, we'll just have to tune in to learn more about this very fascinating personality. How about that? Yep. Ain't that just like life? Here you are, so brilliant, and they reject you and take this woman instead? And now she's a hit. And you? You're still stuck in this bar? Where's the justice in that? You know, somehow I got a feeling and everything's working out just perfectly. Number one. Well, it's only late night, but that's not too bad. Not too bad? Dad, Metal at Midnight wasn't pulling in one-tenth these numbers. McQuitch is a hit. We have to move her. What are you suggesting? I'm suggesting we take her out of the radio ghetto. It's a miracle she found an audience at all this time slot, much less these numbers. So what do you want to do? Move her to drive time. But she curses like a sailor. After 10, that's fine, but three to six? I mean, they're gonna kill us with fines. We'll put her on a seven second delay, let her producer write it. She's gonna want more money. So what? She's a star. If she did this in late night, she's gonna murder in drive time. Then we're talking syndication and really big money. Let's do it. Drive time? That's freaking huge. I know. It's gonna be more money. A lot more for both of us. Think about the exposure. People are actually gonna be awake and tuning in. We're gonna be in their cars with them. This is the holy grail of talk radio. That's right. Wait a second. What? How are we gonna hide you? What are you talking about? Drive time is huge. You're already getting media coverage from a midnight show with limited access to listeners who've mostly forgotten about terrestrial radio broadcasts. Now, when they actually get a chance to hear her, the fuse is lit. This thing is gonna explode into the stratosphere. They're gonna want syndication, TV, endorsement deals, the works. You're gonna be a celebrity. No, strike that. She's gonna be a celebrity. Only problem is, there is no she. You know that. But what you don't know is that people are gonna be yearning to know more about the woman behind the voice. I know that too. Okay, well since you know everything already, how are you, I mean we, gonna keep up the charade once this thing explodes? All it takes is one fool to pull that bag off your head, we pull up to do the show, take a photo, post it online, and you're dead. We'll just follow you home and see you get out of the car, and poof, there goes your gig and all the goodwill you've created. So what do you want me to do, just turn down the slot? No, I mean, because if you don't grow, you, you die anyway. I could come out as myself. I am the one doing the show. <sighs> no, it's too late for that now, Joe. I mean, you tell them you've been lying this whole time, you lose all credibility. Plus, they love Laquisha. <laughs> I don't know if they would like you as much. She is pretty entertaining. She's awesome. Too bad we can't dress you up to look like her. You know, like in Mrs. Doubtfire or Big Mama's House, those Tyler Perry movies. So see. See. It's real life, Mason. It's not a movie. Besides, I don't have the legs for it. <laughs> You're right. So what are we gonna do? They want Loquisha? We give them Loquisha. Good to see y'all. How y'all doing? So good to be here today. Woo! 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 Yeah! Woo! Woo! Yeah! Yeah! yeah. Stop! Yeah. Stop! Stop! But what's wrong? What's with all the jumping? Oh, it says she gets excited. You ain't looking for no cheerleaders. But you advertise for a loquitia type. Yeah, but she doesn't freak out. Okay, first of all, I am an artiste. This is my interpretation of the character. Have you ever even heard the show? I don't need to hear the show to play this character. I'm going to make her my own. Okay, thank you. You're alive with Loquisha. Thanks for coming in. I'm happy to blow you two for the part. Maybe some other time. Next. First of all, I want to tell you how excited I was to see y'all's ad. When you said you was looking for a Loquisha type, I nearly fell out of my chair because I am your girl. I live, breathe, sleep, everything Loquisha. If there was a Loquisha lunchbox, I would have bought it already. 
I've seen every episode of hers at least once, if not more. I downloaded them from the website. That's how much I love them. She is my girl. I love her. She completes me. You know what? Loquisha's everything to me. When I'm on the bus, I listen to her on my iPhone. When I'm working out everywhere I go, she goes. Everything I do, she is there. She is my idol. That's my girl. You know, she is a real role model for every African-American woman on this planet. Free. Uh... Renee. Renee Michelle, like Obama. One of my other role models. But you know what? I'm just going to be honest with you. Loquisha feels a little bit more real to me. OK, so, so you got the script? Yes, I do. But I have a few questions for you. Shoot. First of all, what is this for? Well, we can't give away the details, but if you get the part, we'll tell you everything. See, I don't know about that. Sometimes I see these listings on Craigslist that say actress, performer, and when you ask them, it turns out they just making a porno. You ain't making no porno, are you? Because Renee Michelle don't do porno. Especially not what the budget looks like you fellas have. Because I'm just going to be honest, this casting location ain't exactly the full season. No, we're, we're not making a porno. And we're in this location because the project is on a DL right now. Oh, wait a second. You making a movie about Loquisha's life story? Sweet Jesus, I knew you wouldn't let me down. This was the role I was born to play. This movie's gonna do for me what Dream Girl did for Jennifer Hudson. Hallelujah! No, not making a movie. Broadway show? Cause I can sing and dance like a motherfucker. <laughs> I can even write a show too. You wanna hear? How about Hello Caller? Hello! for no little girl's birthday party, is it? Because I'm sorry, I will not lower myself to that again. I played Cinderella once, and this little white girl walked up to me and said, Cinderella's not black. I nearly slapped the little bitch. I said, what color do you think Cinders are, you little moron? I got fired from that job, but at least I had my self-respect. Could you just read the script, please? Loquisha Live. I'm your host, Loquisha. I really appreciate you coming out today. It's unusual. I get to see so many of my fans in person. All those lovely faces out there, because as a radio host, I only get to hear what you sound like. And now, finally, I get to see what you look like. And you get to see me. <laughs> Come to think of it, I ain't never seen no picture of Loquisha. She's just so alive and vivid on the radio. I just kind of thought she looked like me. And I'm so glad they love me back so much. Clarissa writes, Dear Loquisha, every time I want to make a change in my life, I'm unable to because fear holds me back. What should I do? OK, kick fear's ass. Get fear up it in front of you and say, Fear, you ain't shit. And you just smack it around and do whatever you want. If someone comes in your way, kick them in the nuts. <laughs> As Lucretia said, ain't nobody did it to you but you. So then Lucretia says, you as useless as a cockroach with a college diploma. You need to make yourself indispensable. <laughs> That's how I got my promotion. I got to start listening to her. It's like Lucretia always says, you're pointing that remote control in the wrong direction. I stole it. 
Really? Where did you get this, Joe? I got another job. Doing what? Consulting work. What kind of consulting work? People ask me what I think, and I tell them. Are you doing this for a company? Yes, I am employed by a company. What company? I can't say. Why not? It's a secret. To who? The company? Yeah. I mean, no, maybe. Look, what's important is I got the money for Jason's school, OK? That's what we should be focused on. You stole it, didn't you? No, I did not steal it. But why is it all in cash? Because I thought it'd be fun if I came in here with a lot of cash and said, I did it, OK? So do you want the money or not? Of course I do. Thank you. Although, you know, I shouldn't have to thank you for taking care of our son. You're right. And I would like to thank you as well. For what? Reminding me why we're not together. This is LaQuisha. Who am I speaking to? Hi, LaQuisha. This is Rachel. Hello, Rachel. What seems to be your problem? Well, first I have to tell you, I am a huge fan of your show. And it's funny because you really remind me of a friend of mine. Is that so? Yeah, and the more I listen to you, the more you sound like him. You mean my vocal qualities? <laughs> no, you don't sound like him at all. But you speak the same language. You know what I mean? You mean English. <laughs> I'm just playing, girl. I know exactly what you mean. And it's ironic because I told him he should be a talk radio host. But what happened? It didn't work out. I got a feeling that's not all that didn't work out. Yeah, he gave me some really good advice about my boyfriend. And I took it, but I ended up in the same predicament anyway. I'm confused, Rachel. What's your problem? Well, I broke up with my boyfriend for real this time. And I'm just realizing that I have strong feelings. But the guy who reminds you of me. Yeah. So why don't you tell him? I'm afraid. OK, stop right there. I get it. You afraid that he going to think that you stupid for going back to the other fella after he made it clear that he was no good. And now you think he going to think you too dumb to get with. Kind of. Look, girl, everybody makes mistakes. And sometimes we make the same one over and over and over and over and over again. And sometimes the kind of person that will truly love us sees beyond that mistake. And they see the you waiting on the other side. And they're willing to wait. And just by their sheer willingness to do that and their acceptance of our bumbling ways, we get clear we don't have to make that mistake no more. My advice to you is that if this guy is as great as you say he is... And he must be, because he reminds you of Loquisha. He is going to welcome you with open arms and see the spectacular being that you are. And more importantly, he will facilitate the becoming of that being. And ironically, by you giving him the opportunity to show you what a great dude he is, you will facilitate his highest thing. Ain't that kind of fun? Now go get yourself some loving. Next caller. Hello? Hey, Joe. Hey, Ray. Long time no speak. Yeah, I've been a little busy. I'll bet. So to what do I owe the pleasure of this phone call? Well, I have been thinking of you, and I wanted to say hi. Hi. Joe. Ray. Let me see if I can help you. You broke up with your boyfriend. Yeah. And you feel kind of dumb about it. Because you think I'll tell you I told you so. So you're not sure if you want to tell me. Yeah. Well. You just told me. So there's nothing to worry about. And I don't think you're dumb. I just think that sometimes we need to hit our head against the wall enough times until it's too painful. And sometimes it takes a long time before it really starts to hurt. Wow. What? 
She was right. Who? Never mind. Would you like to join me for a drink? Only if it's at your place. Funny, because that's where we're having it. Hi. <laughs> Boy, you really didn't miss me. Jello, I hope you can forgive me for what a fool I was. Sure, no problem. You tried to tell me, but I wouldn't listen. Hey, let's not rehash the past. We have our whole lives to look forward to. That's what she was talking about. Let me get you a drink. Would you like some wine? I prefer more kissing, but sure, wine's fine. <laughs> you are so cute. Mm. Come in, have a seat. Not that I'm complaining, but what exactly happened? Derek went back to his old ways after a while. I could have told you that. But this, where did this come from? Joe, you are the only person who I've ever met who is just completely honest. You just tell the truth. You don't care about the consequences or what anybody thinks of you. Why would I? That is what I love about you. And I started listening to Loquisha. Oh, listening to Loquisha, are we? Don't make fun of me. She's great. Yeah. I mean, in a way, you're the one who should be doing that show. But it's almost like she says so much of the same things you do. It really is a tragedy that they rejected you. Yeah, it's just ratings and stuff. She's just more showy. See? That's what I'm talking about. You have no agenda. You know the truth, and you're not trying to reshape it to fit your particular interest. I just think that is so sexy. Mm. 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 Oh, you don't know Joe. <laughs> what did you just say? Nothing. You just said, oh, you don't know Joe. <laughs> like Laquisha. Did I? <laughs> you are so funny. It's driving me crazy. Yeah, me too. Damn, that feels good, girl. Why are you doing LaQuisha now? I don't know. That was a little weird, Joe. I know. <laughs> I don't care. Come here. Mm. 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 Yes, sir. OK, now it's officially strange. What is going on? I'm not sure. Are you making fun of me because I'm black? Are you, like, mocking me in some fucked up, twisted way? No, 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 I am not mocking you. Then what was that? I think I might be a black woman trapped in a white man's body. <gasps> You're gay? No, I'm not gay. I'm just very confused right now. I've been going through some very odd changes, Rachel. Are you pre-op transgender? No, I'm very much this gender, and I am not swapping out parts. This has nothing to do with my sexual identity and has to do with who I am. Well, who are you? I don't know right now. OK, now I'm confused. I think I should just go. I need some time to just get my head together and figure this out. I'm so sorry. Thank you so much for the wine and the kissing. I'll call you. You are such a fucking idiot. What is wrong with you? Nothing wrong with me. What's wrong with you? Shut up. No, you shut up. Oh, shit. License and registration, please. That what seems to be a trouble, officer. Sir, have you been drinking tonight? No, sir. Oh, yes, he was! Will you shut up? Excuse me? I apologize, officer. I don't know what I'm saying. Yes, I was at a friend's house. I had one drink. That's it. And they was making out. Who was making out? I'm confused. You know what? <laughs> I'm going to level with you, officer. I was listening to Loquisha on my ride home. And I just can't get her voice out of my head. I know what you mean. The wife is obsessed with her. I am Loquisha, officer. That was a brilliant impression. You sound just like her. I am her. Shut up! OK, buddy. Are you sure you only had one drink? Because it's not funny anymore. <laughs> <laughs>
Absolutely, officer. I'm willing to take a breathalyzer if you want. It's just that this loquitia really gets into you. Tell me about it. It's like the whole city has loquitia mania. No, live loquitia! Okay. I'm gonna let you go with the warning. But you go straight home and stop listening to her. She's clearly making you crazy. Thanks, officer. I'll take your advice and um, have a good night. Yeah, you too. Oh, he better listen. Stop it. I ain't gonna stop nothing. You're out of control. You can't control me, white boy. Oh, we'll see. We'll see about that. I cut you in the night. What? I'm just playing, but I ain't going nowhere. I need help. I know what you should do, honey. Really, Ma? Oh, that would be so great because I could really use some motherly advice right now. Now you're gonna laugh, but you really need to talk to Loquisha. What? You know, Loquisha, the radio talk show host. Oh, God, not you too. Believe it or not, she is very wise. Oh, no. And just because she's a woman and a black person doesn't mean that she doesn't understand you. Is this really happening? Yes, this is happening, Joe. Your mother is telling you to take the advice of a black talk radio show host who just happens to be a woman. Mom, I'm... I don't even know how to tell you this. What, that you're a racist and a misogynist? That you won't even listen to her because she has a vagina and darker skin? I did not raise you like this, Joseph. I am so ashamed right now. Mom, it's not what you think. Well, what is it? Are you gay? Are you afraid to tell me in the world? No, I am not gay. Honey, I will love you no matter who you love. <sighs> Are you sure that you're not feeling like you're a woman trapped in a man's body? OK. I'll talk to Laquisha. Mason, when we come back from commercial, I need you to hold all the calls. Just go with whatever I do, even if it sounds crazy. What are you up to? I'm not sure. I just need you to put a phone filter effect on the second mic. Are you going to make up a caller? No. Then what are you doing? I honestly don't know. <sighs> You live with Loquisha, and we back. Time for our next caller. And we got Joe on the show. How you doing, Joe? I'm good. No, you ain't. People good don't call Loquisha. Fair enough. I'm the fairest of them all. I'm Snow Black. Now, what's your problem? I'm conflicted. About what? I feel like there's two people inside of me, and they're both struggling to be dominant. Oh, so you like schizophrenic? No, it's not that. I know she's made up. She's a figment of my imagination. She? So you invented, like, some sort of imaginary girlfriend? Sounds like Loquisha's got a real nutbag on the line. No, she's not a girlfriend. She's what, Joe? She the yin and yo yang? Yeah, maybe. So what's your problem? I don't know where she stops and I take over. Ah, so you think she, like, out of control? No, she's still in my power. Your power? <laughs> Sounds to me like this woman you giving birth to is her own creation. She just doing her own thing. It's just an act. Then why you calling Loquisha? Because my mom told me to. Oh, you got mommy issues. No, I've just been very confused lately about your sexual identity. You gay? Why does everybody keep saying that? No, I'm not gay. I love women. All right, fine. You protest a little bit too much, but what's your problem? I still don't know why you calling. It's like a ventriloquist who gets a dummy. Because the dummy can say all the things the ventriloquist can't. Sounds to me like the ventriloquist is a dummy. No, he's not. It's just the dummy's more entertaining. You're damn right she is. But even though the ventriloquist knows that he's the one behind it, and he's the one getting the love from the audience, he, you mean you, yeah, I can't feel it anymore. I feel like I lost myself somewhere along the way. And even after the show's over, nobody wants to hear me. I don't even want to hear me. They just want her. Sounds to me like you're jealous of yourself. You have a very rare condition known as auto envy, which is a very heightened form of narcissism. Even though you're successful, you still can't acknowledge it. It's not enough for you to do good work. You need for everybody to know it's you doing it. No, that's not it. Don't bullshit me, Joe. I'm Loquisha. 
I'm your main girl. You can't play games with me. All right, you're right. I want people to know how smart I am. No, you want you to know how smart you are. Don't get lost in her. You can do everything she can. She your little creation. Have fun with her. She your Frankenstein. You know what they say, behind every successful woman is a man who wishes he could do it. That's not funny. Yes, it is. And if you was in your right mind, you know it was. You are that woman. Love her. Kiss her, hug her, embrace her. Bring her back into you. Carl Jung calls it the process of integration. And as a black woman, I think I know a little something about integration. Just because you got a penis don't mean you ain't got a little woman in you. I got a little man in me, and I wish the hell he get the hell out. Seriously, it's normal. When people talk about God, they usually say he, but there's clearly no gender in the divine nature. It just divided itself up into two for reproductive purposes because we get tired of the same old thing. My advice to you is don't be afraid of any part of you. The man, the woman, the black, the white, the Chinese, the Mexican, the Christian, the Jew, the Muslim, the vegetarian, the carnivore, the Republican, the Democrat, the homeless bum, the billionaire. We need all of them to be whole. And that's the healing you got to do, Joe. I'm going to tell you right now, if you deny her, she just going to take you over. And at that point, I suggest a whole slew of medication and a trip to the funny farm, because that is where you headed if you don't stop this madness. Am I right? Yes, you're right. As always, Loquisha. Good, so you know who's who and what's what? I think I do. And you gonna let her be? I'm gonna let her be. I'm gonna be me. Well, all right then. We'll be right back. What the fuck was that? I was just working some stuff out. Talk about walking a tightrope. I didn't know whether to, to applaud you or strangle you. Well, if you would have strangled me, it would have been the end of the show. I don't know. I got a feeling Lucretia would go on without you. Hey, I know you just talked yourself off the ledge. You think you could do it for real this time? What's up? You got a jumper. Well, I certainly think I can. So when we get back for a commercial, just put them through and we'll either sink or swim. Here's Doris. Good luck. We back. And you live with Loquisha. Go ahead. I'm on a bridge above the river, and I'm going to jump. But thanks for calling. Enjoy your jump. What? You said you jumped. I am. I thank you for calling. I said enjoy your jump. Can't you see I need help? What I can see is somebody looking for some attention. I certainly don't want to be the last person on earth to let you down, so I think you should jump. That way, you get a whole bunch of attention. And if you commit suicide on my show, shh, I'm going to get national coverage. I'm going to be famous. So it's in my best interest that you plunge your death right now. So go ahead, Doris. Make everybody happy. Do what you got to do. Why would you say that, Loquisha? Because I care about you. I want to see you get some justice. This way, you get to tell everybody I told you so from the great beyond. Isn't that what you want? No. Well, then what do you want? I want somebody to care about me. How about you? Me? Yeah. Why don't you set an example for the rest of us and give a shit about yourself? I care about me. No, you don't. Anybody who would squander such a precious gift of life does not give a rat's ass about they self. You ever been a Paris, Doris? No. I've always wanted to go. You never been a Paris and you gonna kill yourself? Shit, girl. Here's what I would do if I was you. I would fly myself to Paris. I would fall in love with it. I go to the Champs-Élysées. I eat at a cafe, hand me a croissant, 
I would go to Baloo, see the Mona Lisa smile. I fall in love with a Frenchman and make me some love. And then I would fling myself from the top of the Eiffel Tower. That way, you make quite a splash or a splat. Of course, you ruin the Eiffel Tower for everybody else. But jumping off a bridge in Detroit is forgettable. Not to mention stupid. And if you're calling me, then you clearly don't want to be forgettable or stupid. I don't. A wise man once said, this too shall pass. So whatever you're going through right now, Doris, believe me, it's going to change. You need to talk to the future Doris, who is having an incredible time in Paris, not to mention many other adventures. And she'd be pissed as hell if you just impulsively killed her before allowing yourself to live out this magnificent life of yours. I've heard Paris is nice in the spring. It's beautiful, girl. I'm going to go. You mean you going to go jump? Or are you going to go to Paris? I'm going to go to Paris. Good. I got to go, too. All right, everybody. You see Doris in Paris, make sure you nice to her. Good night. This is Live with Loquisha. amazingly talked down the jumper. She calls herself Laquisha, and she's creating quite a stir. A radio host from Detroit saved a suicidal girl yesterday. Man, this is crazy. I know. Can you believe this? We're famous. No, we're not famous. She's famous. Oh, I'm not complaining. And you're not going to believe this. What? I got an offer from Oprah's network to do a Loquisha Live TV show. You're kidding me. No, they emailed this morning. What'd you say? What do you think I said? I said no. Why? I can't believe you're actually asking me that question. I got about a million reasons why. Yeah, but what? The money? Come on, man. I can't believe you actually want to talk about this. It's just that we're good with the money, OK? Ken and Bob are about to ink a national syndication deal. We are good with the money. Let's not do something idiotic and screw this whole thing up, OK? You're right. You're right. It's just TV's big. But it, I guess it's better that I uh, just listen to Laquisha. You got that right, baby. Mind. What the hell are you doing here? Get in here. Are you crazy? What if somebody saw you out there? You could ruin our whole operation. You turned down a show on Oprah's network? Who told you that? What difference does it make? Why are you turning down motherfucking TV shows? You know how much money that can mean? We be famous. Well, it's pretty clear I can't do it. Well, I can. <laughs> no, you can't. Yes, I can. I play her already. Well, you play her, but you're not her. Oh, no. I'm having a bizarre conversation with a white boy. I know it's a bizarre conversation, and I know I'm a white boy, but I am her, and she is me. I knew you was a crazy motherfucker when I took this job, but this is too motherfucking much. Renee, you do a great job with personal appearances, but the therapy, it's just not your thing. Who cares? I'll pretend, just like you do. I'm an actress. I'll pretend to care about the people and their little problems, and I'll tell them the same shit you do. It's not that hard. It's a lot more complex than it seems, OK? And I can't have you out there compromising Loquisha's integrity. Integrity? That's hilarious. You've got to be kidding me, right? You a fake, I'm a fake, and she's a fake. But at least I'm a real black woman. And the only thing you're doing is up in here stealing people's identity. You an identity thief. I didn't steal anybody's identity. I made her up. Oh, you're an identity thief. You might not be an individual identity thief, but you're a cultural identity thief. You done stole an entire culture's identity, not to mention the genders, and co-opted it for your own little charade. But it's time for the sisterhood to take back what is rightfully ours with a little bit of payback. So we got a new deal, Joe. From now on, everything Loquisha makes, we split 70-30. Wait a second. I've been very fair with you. I give you 100% of all the personal appearances. You make $15 for just sitting in the radio studio. Now you're telling me you want 30% of everything? No, I don't want 30%. Well, that's a relief. 
you get 30. What? Yeah, and if you keep talking, you'll get 25 and then 20. Why in a million years would I take that deal? Because if you don't, I would tell everybody. And I do mean everybody. Are you blackmailing me? No, I'm black femaleing you. You got 48 hours to make a decision, white boy. Have a good weekend. Yeah? Well, you can forget it, okay? I tell you right now, oh, I would never take that deal. So there's my answer. Hey, Joe. Hey, Sid. Listen, I want to acknowledge you for coming through for Jason. He's thriving in the school. The teachers are so impressed, and he's loving his classmates. He's never been happier. That's great. Is he here? Yeah, he's in his room. Do you want to come inside for a second? Ah, uh, no, thanks. I'll, I'll just wait out here. OK. I'll get him. to ride a real horse. Believe it. And I got two tickets to the Pistons tonight. We're going to the Pistons game? No, I'm taking somebody else. I'm joking. Now let's go get an unbelievable lunch. You know, Dad, I've always loved you, but I've been loving you so much more since you got a better job. <laughs> oh, the money. Yeah, the money. I mean, we've got to do some fun things these days. Yeah, fun, fun, fun. A lot of fun with the money. It's funny money. You know what that is, Jason? Funny money? Yeah, it's counterfeit. Yep, it's a fraud. It's phony. Not worth the paper it's printed on. Is everything OK, Dad? What could be wrong? Everything's great, right? So how's your school, Jason? It's great. I really love it. Yeah? What are you learning? I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? Why am I paying so much money if you don't know? Isn't that kind of the point? To gain knowledge? In fact, high-quality knowledge that would lead one to, I don't know, wisdom? And when I say I don't know, I'm being ironic, because I really do know. The point is to make good choices based on sound knowledge that would lead one to a life of sustainable happiness, not one of perennial regret and misery. Not even in middle school. I don't know anything about wisdom. Yeah, well, I'm in middle age. I don't know anything about it. Well, then maybe you should go back to school. I'm not your school. I'm sorry, Jason. I don't know what I'm saying. I know you love that school. It's OK. Just OK? No, it's cool. I mean, the biggest thing I've learned there is to just be myself. Like, when I first got there, I pretended to like things that the other kids liked, so that I wouldn't feel weird, and I could make friends. Really? Yeah, this one time I was sitting down by myself, and this kid sits down, and I saw he was eating this tuna sandwich. So I just said, oh, you like tuna? So do I. Next thing I know, we're friends, and a couple of weeks later, he brings this extra tuna sandwich for me. But you hate her. I know, but I had to take the sandwich, I mean, he was my friend, and I was going to toss it later, but then he just kept telling me to eat it, so I ate the whole thing, and I threw up. What? Yeah, I got sick because I didn't like it. So you got sick because you weren't being yourself? Yeah, and my kid stopped being my friend anyway because he got offended because I tossed back his sandwich. So maybe it's just better to be alone and feel OK than to start lying to get the things you want. Yeah, you're just going to get sick and lose them anyway. Would you love me less if I didn't have all this money? No, we just get to do a lot less fun things. Why? Are you going to quit your job? Well, what about your school? What about it? You really love it? Like I said, it's cool, but I really love you, Dad. And. I don't want you to get sick because of me. Maybe you actually do know a little something about wisdom after all, Jason. Well, you just be good to her. You know what I say. If you're good to yourself, you can be good to others. But don't be too good because the police will come around. All right, thanks for calling. Thanks, Luke. 
Lucretia. Well, that's our last call of the night. And in fact, our last call for good. I'd like to thank everybody from the bottom of my heart for participating in this show, those who was working on it and those who was just calling in. But tonight, due to personal reasons, I'm signing off for good. I've always said that this show is about you and not me. But suffice it to say that circumstances have arisen whereby if I was forced to go on, I would no longer be able to be a service to you because I would not be me. I love you all. Good night and goodbye. What the fuck are you doing? You said we had a deal. I couldn't do it. Oh, you can't cancel the show. I just did. I'll tell everybody. Go ahead. It doesn't matter now. White motherfucker. What the hell are you doing? I can't work under these conditions. What conditions? I'm a star can, and I don't even have a proper dressing room. It's talk radio. Why do you need a dressing room? It's all in how you handle your star. OK, we'll get you a dressing room. And I need to get paid like a star. We we're going to talk about that when syndication kicks in. It's only two weeks away. That's too late. I just head to another station. You got a contract. You got to honor that. You cannot walk out on me. You got to honor your star, Ken. I think you got your priorities mixed up. I put you guys on the map. OK, we'll get you whatever you want. I have my lawyer call you in the morning. And if he likes what he hears, I'll be back at 3 with my huge fan base. Have a good night, Ken. You're despicable. And you're fired. Perfect. I wouldn't work for you anyway, fake-ass Loquisha. You live with Loquisha, and rumors of my demise have been greatly exaggerated. I couldn't stay away from y'all. <laughs> I just want to thank you for all your outpouring of love. Now, let's get down to business. Next caller. Then I got divorced from my daughter's father. So you deprived your child of a father? She sees him regularly. How you call him regular? You doomed that child for an irregular life. No, that's not how it is. Don't you dare, goddammit, tell me how it is. You understand me? You called me. This is my show. I tell you how it is. People, you're not getting it. I'm tired of listening to all your pathetic stories. You're just a bunch of weak people trying to suck my power, and I'm not having it anymore. Next caller. Hello, Quisha. Hello. First of all, I have to say, ever since you came back a few weeks ago, you're like a totally different person. Mike how? What you even talking about? Well, for one thing, you don't even sound like you used to. I mean, your voice is different. What? You crazy. You know what you're talking about. You're crazy and you're stupid. And that's the other thing. You're just mean now. You used to be straight with people and use tough love. Now it's just tough luck. Well, that's none of my business. Your feelings are your own, and I'm not responsible for them. But it's like your entire essence has changed. Maybe it's because you're really famous now. You think it's OK to be a bitch. I'm powerful. And you scared because I tell people off. You wish you could. You're jealous. No, I'm not jealous of you at all. In fact, I kind of pity you now. You really just lost your soul. I didn't lose my soul. I just evolved. I'm an evolved soul, and you can't handle it because you're ignorant. So you ain't no me. You like the Romans who nailed up our Lord and Savior. You a murderous Cretan, and I'm God. Like, so that's what I'm talking. Hello? Uh, hello? Did you just hang up on me? Oh, no, no, no. I'm Loquisha. Don't nobody hang up on me. I do the hanging up, God damn it. Hello? Hello? I am the great and powerful Loquisha! Nobody hangs up on me! I am the great and powerful Loquisha? Yes, sir. Who do you think you are, the Wizard of Oz? No, I'm Loquisha. Not for long. What you talking about, Ken? I'm talking about your ratings. You know the thing attracts your listeners? Ever since you came back, got that big raise, they've been plummeting. We're down 38% in three and a half weeks. So let them go. We don't need those people. Yes, yes, we do need those people. And the advertisers do. Well, you know the people who pay your salary? And the new affiliates do. I got a call from the regional salesperson. He tells me that a fair number of stations are already dropping the show. And several others are seriously considering it. They're asking us, what did we do with the real Laquisha? 
They think we did a bait and switch. She's right here. Doesn't sound like, especially after yesterday's little meltdown. I'm a fan, Laquisha, but I couldn't believe how you spoke to those people. Where's the warmth, the humor, and the insight that made you a superstar? I'm burned out, Ken. It's just such a weight I'm carrying. Every one of those people wants me to solve their problems and make their life right. I guess that's why I said that about our savior. Forgive me, Jesus. But I feel like this is more than one person can bear. You'll have to forgive me. We can forgive you, but your audience won't. Look, I think I just might need a break to clear my head and recharge my batteries. I might need to take a trip down to the Caribbean for a week or two. I think that's a good idea. We can save off the affiliates for a week or two, play a few things from the archives, get them excited again. Yeah, that sounds great, Ken and Bob. <laughs> a little perspective and a banana daiquiri. <laughs> Soaking up that sun and frolicking in them waves. Ooh, damn, that sounds good. That's I think good. that's a great idea. I agree. You take a couple of weeks, but when you get back here, you better be ready to go or else. Or else what? You'll be fine. What are you doing here? I thought you were in Aruba. Oh, you know about that? It's all over the news. You can't get away from it. Loquisha had an on-air meltdown comparing herself to God and the Wizard of Oz. Kind of hard to miss. You got to admit it was outrageous. She was never meant to be outrageous. She's not a goddamn reality show or a shock jock or a clown. She listens to people and helps them on their journey. A little compassion, humor, and most of all, the unadulterated truth so they can cut through all the shit in their lives, which is a rare, precious, and much needed thing. And you fucked it all up. Okay, I messed up. You want me to admit it? There, I said it. You are a better black woman than I am, okay? I said it, and, and that was hard for me. Again, not the point. It was never about race or gender or fame or fortune. It's about telling the truth straight from your heart without fear or worry of being wrong or bad. It was holistic healing broadcast from the sky into the hearts and minds of anybody willing to tune in. But you turn it into your egomaniacal circus, your platform for your personal power play, and now it's gone. Oh, no, 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 no. We're just on a two-week hiatus. And then what? You come back. What? Look, I screwed up major. But you can fix it. You can come back and it can go back to the way it was. You get 70% and I get 30. Okay, here we go. We can go all the way back where I'll just get my personal appearance money and my hourly studio rate and I'll cancel the TV thing. They're probably not messing with me anyway because of what I did. You still don't get it, do you, Renee? It's over. Oh, no. It's not over till I say it's over. Something I should have done long ago. Excuse me, can I help you? Yeah, I'm here to see Bob and Ken. I believe they're in a meeting. Sir, you can't just walk in there. Trust me, they're gonna want to see me. Who are you? It's complicated. Hi, guys. Who are you? I'm Joe. Yo, do I know you? You look familiar. You used to work for Laquisha. You were one of her uh, engineers, right? Not an engineer. Now I remember, you're always in that room with her like her personal posse. Wait, are you her boyfriend? I'm not her boyfriend. Then you got to help me out here, Joe. What exactly are you doing here? I'm Laquisha. Come again? I know it's hard to believe, but... <clears throat> I am! Hello, Quisha, Robert Bob, and Ken. Now that we know, it's like one of those M. Night Shyamalan movies where you go, of course. Oh, you mean The Sixth Sense, because the other ones were predictable and stupid, but yeah, I know what you mean. Why'd you do it, Joe? It started out as an experiment. I sent you an audition, you rejected it, I jazzed it up a little bit, and you loved it. But you, she always preached honesty. I didn't intend to go through with it. I needed the money for my kid's school. I knew it was wrong, but I had to do it. 
means justify the ends kind of thing. Yeah, something like that. It's not like you guys didn't benefit. Nobody got hurt. That was until Renee took over. That was a disaster. Yeah, it was like giving her the keys to a Mach 1 race car and watching them explode. So now what? I go on air, confess my sins, and make a mea culpa. Wait, wait. It's not like anyone other than us, and Mason, and Renee knows about this. No, but you're not seriously suggesting. Absolutely not. I've already compromised my integrity enough. No way. I have to respect that, Joe, but think about it another way. How? Well, Lucretia's a beloved character, right? And like many fictional characters, I don't think people care whether she's real or not. I mean, does knowing that Mickey Mouse is made up does make you love him any less? No, I love Mickey. So how about we do this? You tell everyone you're Lucretia, but the show goes on. What, you want me to confess and progress? Exactly. Great idea, Dad. I don't know, Mr. Richardson. I mean, I love Loquisha too, but as they say, I gotta be me. And I don't know how I'd feel about spending the rest of my career channeling a black woman, not to mention how black women would feel. And now that the cat's out of the bag, I just don't know how free and bold I'd be as Loquisha as I was before when I was completely anonymous. What about your kid's school? Don't you need money for tuition? Tell you what. Let's let the audience decide. Okay. And so that, my dearest listeners, is the story of our beloved Loquisha. If you're upset, you feel deceived, I can understand and accept your anger. I did it. Save my son. I kept doing it because I fell in love with all of you. And I found me. Moving forward, we can do one of three things. We can transition to the Joe Show. Same exact thing, just me and my voice. Or we can continue on with Loquisha Live and I can channel our favorite Nubian princess, as long as everybody knows who's behind it all. Or you can vote me into Radio Exile. Facebook page is live, ready for your vote. You have until midnight tonight. Whatever our fate, Aquisha and I would like to express our most sincerest gratitude to all of you. We hope you'll forgive our iniquities and accept our love. Good night. And perhaps goodbye. I hope to talk to you again sometime. completely crazy, but we also think you're a freaking genius. Probably be right on both counts. <laughs> what if they fire you? Oh, I thought you might want your old job back, but I don't know how safe it would be. There's a whole lot of people out there who are pissed as hell at you. Yeah, and uh, there's one now. You're Loquisha? My God, Joe, I cannot believe that my own son would lie to me about this. Calm down, Mom. I never told you I wasn't Loquisha, so technically I didn't lie. It was an omission. That is still deception. I tried to tell you at one point, but you loved her so much, I didn't want to ruin it for you. But I said all the stupid things about how you should take her this. You were right. Everything she said was true. Why should it change anything just because it came out of my mouth? It doesn't. It's just that. I'm so shocked. But honestly, Joey, I'm very proud of you. I always knew that someday you were going to do something really big. I just never realized you were going to do it as a black woman. That makes two of us. I'm voting for the Cho Show. Because I know that you are even better than Loquisha. Thanks, Mom. Coming from you means a lot. You're an African-American woman? On his show. He pretended to be one on his show. What show? I didn't know he even had a show. Well, apparently nobody else did either. Gotta hand it to you, Joe. 
We haven't seen this level of mass deception since Enron. Well, nobody lost their money on this, Sydney, or their lives. Not yet. But if you lose the show, you will be losing your money. What's going to happen to my school? Well, I might still keep the show, and if I don't, we'll figure something out. I don't like the sound of that. What do you think I'm going to do, rob a bank? I'm not a criminal. I put on a funny voice so I can help people. I'm proud of you, Dad. I think. Hi, Joe. Oh, shit, you scared the fuck out of me. I thought somebody was going to murder me. Well, I haven't made up my mind yet. You heard. I was kind of a fan. I can't believe you were LaQuisha. Boy, do I feel stupid. Why? Why? Uh, let's start with the fact that I took advice from her about us, which really means that I took advice from you about us without even knowing it. It was good advice. You took advantage of me, Joe. You told me exactly what I wanted to hear. And the problem with me? You lied. You pretended to be somebody else. You tricked me. No, I told you the truth, as I always have. Only I did it with a theatrical device so you could actually hear it. Oh, you are such a jerk. Man, it hurt. You think all black women sound like that? Yo, what up? How you doing? I mean, I could tell everybody's like everything, but I could barely speak properly. You're a racist and a misogynist. No, it was just a theatrical device. Why'd she have to make us sound so stupid? Well, if she was so stupid, then why did you follow her advice? What she said was brilliant, but this over-the-top character, that was completely idiotic. That's what they wanted. They didn't want me, remember? You didn't want me. You know, I might be a fake and a phony, but I am the most authentic one you will ever meet. I know, Joe. I, you know, I didn't care that you pretended to be somebody else. I know who you are. And I... I love you. That's what I was going to say. Great. I've got nothing left to talk about. Hello? 20% voted to can you. Wow, 20%. That's a lot. Wait a second. That means I still have my show. Who'd they vote for? 40% voted for LaQuisha. So that means... It's a tie. <laughs> well, that's it for the first episode of The Joe Show. We'll be back tomorrow, same time, same place. Right now, I'm going to hand it off to one of my favorite people and yours, who's got just one question for you. What's your problem?